Okay, so tonight we're going to talk a little bit about um, substitution and systems of equations. So remember, um, systems of equations, we're still trying to find um, whether two lines will either intersect or if they'll be parallel or if they'll be the same line. Um, those are our three solutions. One solution, no solutions, or all solutions, okay? So we're going to look at some of these problems that we did last night that we simplified. Um, we went over in class today how to simplify this equation, we had to multiply everything by 4. And so the 2 went to 4 twice, so that became 2x. 4 is crossed off, and that became y. And then 4 times 6 is 24. And then you just have y equals 4. Hopefully you remember y equals 4 is a horizontal line. Okay. So when you have something like this, substitution is going to be a great solution opposed to graphing, and then we're going to learn elimination a little bit better. Because right here, this says y equals 4. So what I can do is I can substitute this 4 in for y, because down here it's telling me that y is the same thing as 4. So I can just make this 2x plus, instead of y, I'm going to plug in 4, equals 24. And then I have a two-step equation to solve. So that's plus 4, so we want to subtract 4 here and subtract 4 here, and that's going to give you 20. So we'll bring down the 2x. We have 2x equals 20. That's 2 times x. So when we divide, that becomes 2 divided by 2, or 1x. And then we'll divide by 2 here, and that's 10. So my solution is x is 10 and y is 4. So that's a one solution. So we say that's a consistent systems with one solution, right? Good. So this is why substitution is easy. Um, the other method we can do is graph, but then we would have to put this in slope-intercept form, graph it out and find the intersection. In this case, when you have something simple like this, it's easy just to plug it in. Okay. So let's scroll down here and we'll look at um, this little more complicated one down here. Oops. So this is one we did in class yesterday too or today, but I forgot the y, so I added the y. So here we had to get this to look nice first. So for this top one, since this was in the hundreds place, I times everything by 100, and we went over this in class today. So when I t multiply everything by 100, that becomes 100x. Decimal was over twice for the two zeros, 13, 1, 200. This one, we have decimals in the tenths place here, so we multiply everything by 10 which makes a decimal move over one spot. So this just becomes uh, 1x, and then minus, that moves over 1 for 12y, and that moves over 1 for 10. So here we can also make this into a substitution problem. Um, very simply, um, x has no coefficient. It just has 1, right? So that makes it an easy target to change into um, substitution. Because what you're really looking for is there a variable that you can get by itself pretty easily. So for this one, all I have to do is add 12y to this side. And then I have x equals 12y plus 1. So I isolated the variable by itself. In the first example, it was already isolated by itself here. y was already equal to 4. In this one, I had to isolate it by just adding 12 to that side. So now here I'm saying x is equivalent to this 12y plus 1. So I am going to, wherever I see x, replace it with this because it says it's equal to that. So looking at this top equation now, I have 100 times x. So instead of putting in x, I'm going to put in 12y plus 1. Then I'm going to keep with the equation 13y equals 200. The reason I do that now is I have only one variable. So when you only have one variable, you can solve for it. If you have two variables, you can't. So then we have to do the distributive property here. So that's 100 times 12. So that's going to mean 1200y plus 100 times 1, which is 100. And then we have 13y equals 200. So here I have like terms. I have 1200y 
and I have 1300y. So I'm just going to add those together for 1213y. Now I know these look like big numbers, but it's easy math. So then we subtract 100. So that gives you 0 and 100. Hopefully you can see this. I'm not uh, losing you in my head here. So now um, what we're left with is 1213y equals 100. So we'll just divide by that. Oops, that should be a 1. So then we'll have y equals. And I know this is a prime number, so I just leave it as this messy, ugly number here. So I just leave it as 100 over 1213. So again, um, because this has an answer, it has one solution. So um, for y, we have 100 and 1213. So then we actually got to go back in and plug that in uh, for y to get x, okay? So this is, we're going to go back to this equation here, and I'm going to say x equals 12. Now we know y is this 100 over 1213. This was a messy example to show you guys. So I'm going to go to my calculator here. What happened to my calculator? I think I lost it. Oops. Hold on. So I put in 12 times 100 over 1300 plus 1. I got this. I made a fraction, so we have a messy number here to put in here, but that's okay. We'll make it work. But we should know that it has one solution, therefore it is a consistent equation. Aren't you glad I did that nice messy one for you? So what I want you guys to do is try this one right here on your own. This one should be nice and easy. Um, oops. y equals 2x. So you're going to plug in 2x for y and solve, okay? And then uh, we'll talk about it tomorrow morning. Have a good night.